to Life with David. I'm David, and today I would like to revisit the mid-1970s. In my last video, I introduced you to the terminal interface monitor for the legendary 6502 8-bit microprocessor. I purchased mine in 1977 when I wanted to do a little more complex programming. I had just upgraded my computer at the time to 4K of random access memory, or RAM. As luck would have it, the People's Computer Company had developed a very small basic programming language that would easily run in 4K of memory. It was called Tiny Basic, and it would be a game changer for early computer users like me. So why don't you join me on a trip down memory lane as we examine Tiny Basic in more detail? Back in the day, memory was really expensive. In 1978, 2102 1K by 1 static memory chips cost $1.75 each, not including the sockets and other hardware needed to make them work. At that price, the 16 gigabytes of RAM in my current computer would cost about $1.5 billion today. Moore's Law definitely applies here. In 1977, a floating point basic was available from Microsoft. It needed 12K to run and cost about $130 for the program and about $300 for the additional memory. That would be about $2,000 today. That was a lot of money for a newlywed couple just out of school. Conversely, Tiny Basic was available for $6 and could run in 4K of RAM. However, you gave up a lot of functionality for that low price and size. The program, which resides in 2K of RAM, is limited to 16-bit integer numbers and a total of 26 variables with single character variable names A through Z. The variables are limited to numeric integers. Strings can only be generated within the print statement. Finally, there are only 12 basic statement types, a subset of standard basic. However, despite those limitations, TinyBasic allowed microprocessor users to write fun and useful programs. Tiny Basic was a great stopgap while we were all waiting for the price of memory and programs to drop to levels we could afford. Let's take a little drive. I'll run this on my multi-purpose 6502 based computer running with the TIM chip. Years ago, I converted the Tiny Basic program from paper tape to a text file, so I'll load it using HyperTerminal. It loads in in two sections. The input-output vectors are loaded into page 1, and the interpreter itself is loaded starting at address 0200. The starting address of the basic user program is 0B00. After the interpreter has loaded, the cold start address is 0200 and the warm start address is 0203. The warm start address is handy if you have to exit Tiny Basic but want to re enter the interpreter without having to retype your basic program. Tiny Basic looks like any other in basic interpreter, just much leaner. Here's a little program that outputs 64 random numbers from 1 to 100. In this Hello World program, strings can only be typed from the print command. Numbers range from minus 32,768 to positive 32,767. You have to be careful if you go outside that range since overflow and underflow are not flagged and the numbers will wrap around as shown by the ex example. When I enter minus 32,769, which is just below the negative range, the answer is positive 32,767. Because of the small size of Tiny Basic, error numbers are used instead of error statements. When an error is encountered, 
Tiny Basic will print the error number followed by the line number. The basic program execution can be terminated by typing Control C. Finally, for all its limitations, with some clever programming, Tiny Basic can do some useful tasks. Here it performs, albeit very slowly, a hexadecimal dump of memory locations. It's amazing how difficult and raw things were in the early days of microcomputers. Thanks for joining me today. We explored Tiny Basic a very small basic interpreter that could run well on microprocessors with as little as 4K of RAM. Not only was it small, but it was also cheap. I enjoyed shaking off the cobwebs from some of these old systems. It's fun, and it makes you appreciate the technology we have today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!